Hi, my name is Jennifer Ball, and I am a seasoned educator with over 30 years experience serving the educational needs of students in Southern California. As my journey began, I was an eighth grade U.S. history teacher at a prestigious all-girls school in Southern California. In 2013, after being handed an iPad and asked how I would use the tool to support learning in my classroom, I embarked on a journey to learn more about technology integration. I was fortunate to find the MET program at Boise State University. The past three years have been exciting ones filled with great success. Certainly, completing coursework for a master's degree is always challenging, but to do so while working full-time, managing a family, and staying sane was at times daunting. I can't believe I'm almost finished. As I look back over my journey, I realize that I've learned some very important lessons. The top four are the importance of backward planning, the essence of clear communication, the profound idea that collaboration strengthens learning, and the fact that organization is the key to success. The importance of backward planning. Several courses in the MET program reinforce the principle of backward planning. In particular, in Module 2 of EdTech 512, Online Course Design, Chapter 1 of Understanding by Design by Wiggins and McTeague introduced me to the principles of backward design. In this chapter, teachers are identified as engineers, creating learning activities and assessments to obtain instructional goals. According to the authors, an important part of the process is developing lessons that meet the needs of all learners. Along with effective lesson design, teachers must carefully monitor student progress and determine if students successfully attain the anticipated course goals. National, state, and local standards are pivotal in determining whether or not courses are meeting their required educational goals. They provide a framework for lesson development. The authors stress the importance of beginning lesson design by identifying the standards and goals. This reverse thinking on the part of instructional designers and teachers will ensure that courses are designed more purposefully and maximize opportunities for students to meet educational goals. The course I created for EdTech 512 is evidence of my application of the backward design approach. I began the planning for my online course creation by identifying the topic of the course, the intended audience, the purpose of the course, the standards that the course would address, and the course objectives. By determining essentials for student understanding, I was able to focus the lesson on larger ideas to develop deeper levels of learning instead of the memorization of facts that are easily accessible online. Additionally, during EdTech 542, technology-supported project-based learning, the application of backward planning required me to first identify standards and goals for my learning project. According to leaders in project-based learning from the Buck Institute for Education, at the center of effective student learning is the identification of academic and content goals. This concept was applied in the coursework from the very beginning. As I created this course, I applied backward planning principles to identify the standards and goals I wished to address in the lesson material. This helped me stay on target with lesson design. For example, this lesson, titled Emerging Dystopia, was created applying the backward design principles. As you can see on the welcome page, learning expectations identify knowledge, skills, and attitudes that will be reinforced during the lesson. Applying the principles of backward design has helped me to become a more effective teacher and has led to higher engagement and a more student-centered classroom. The Essence of Clear Communication during my coursework at Boise State, I learned that clear, effective communication is essential to success in education, especially within distance learning scenarios. 
I learned in designing lessons that I need to ask how students communicate in this day and age. What tools are they using? How are they engaging with each other? Is this communication effective? Is it productive? And how can I teach students to use these same tools and procedures to learn? Using technology to communicate clearly involves the application of digital media literacy skills. The ICT Leadership Council defines digital media literacy as a lifelong learning process of capacity building for using digital technology, communication tools, and other networks in creating, assessing, analyzing, managing, integrating, evaluating, and communicating information in order to function in a knowledge-based economy and society. In EdTech 501, Introduction to Educational Technology, I was challenged to research digital media literacy, the importance of online safety, and how to teach these skills to my students. I created a short video discussing the importance of introducing these skills to students. I was also asked to practice communicating online using a variety of tools. This really helped me to understand the use of each tool and possible classroom applications. EdTech 502, the Internet for Educators, is probably the best example I experienced of clear, effective communication in an online class. Dr. Evanowski was available and present in the online environment. Her expectations were simple and clearly stated for each module, and her use of a variety of online communication tools to support my success was admirable. This course could have been difficult because of the complicated nature of writing code to create web content. However, Dr. Evanowski's consistently clear communication made this class a joy. The profound idea that collaboration strengthens learning. Over the years, I have become convinced that collaboration is essential because learning is never an isolated event. In each course of the MET program, I was challenged to find new and effective ways to communicate in the online environment. In EdTech 521, Teaching Online in the K-12 Environment, one of the course objectives was to understand and demonstrate appropriate uses of asynchronous and synchronous online teaching tools. We spent several weeks researching best practices for online collaboration and practicing these techniques using a variety of tools such as Google Hangouts. Also, while completing EdTech 541, Integrating Technology into the Classroom Curriculum, I was assigned the task of creating three content-level modules that included the use of a variety of collaboration tools. In my community building and social networking project, I included the use of Twitter, Google Hangouts, and VoiceThread to support learning and collaboration. In this summative assessment lesson, students have the opportunity to work collaboratively in wagon teams to demonstrate their understanding of the territorial acquisitions of the United States prior to the Civil War. Using social media tools from everyday life to communicate and express learning is a great way to increase student engagement. Using online tools also gives each student an opportunity to have a voice in the community of learners. The fact that organization is the key to success. I think the most challenging course in the MET program was probably EdTech 504, Theoretical Foundations of Educational Technology. During this course, I completed weekly course readings, participated in group projects and discussions, compiled an annotated bibliography, conducted research, and wrote a formal paper. This could have been overwhelming if the course instructor, Dr. Friesen, had not organized the course in such a way as to support my success. Other courses, such as EdTech 506, Graphic Design for Learning, took complex ideas and through simple organization of learning guidelines, clearly communicated learning goals. During this course, I was introduced to the concepts of the design and creation of images to support learning. I created a unit of study titled, Who Am I in America? 
I then created different images applying graphic design concepts to support student success. This family tree image was created using a GIF file from Susan W. and overlaying text boxes in pink for maternal and blue for fraternal. In Chapter 3 of Creating Graphics for Learning and Performance, Lessons in Visual Literacy, the author expresses the idea that the three parts of this process tend to happen at the same time. This is exactly what I experienced in creating this visual. The unit of study begins with a lesson in which 8th grade U.S. history students are asked to identify their origins. The purpose of this instructional image is to have students begin the process of thinking about the influence of origins. Using the tree as a simple background image allows the user to make a connection between family and origins. As I reflect on my years at Boise State, I realize that I have gained so much. I am a different educator today than I was when I began my journey. Everything I do is a reflection of what I've learned these past few years. I think in terms of the importance of starting with the end in mind to support alignment of learning goals. I listen to students and faculty to identify the essence of clear communication and apply these principles to life. I apply the profound idea that learning is never an isolated event and incorporate collaborative opportunities into each lesson. And overall, I understand that organization is the key to success or failure in my teaching. Now that I'm reaching the end of my journey, I'm looking forward to earning a position where I will be able to support instruction and learning as an integration specialist and as an instructional designer. Thank you.